apostle last Sunday, he was speaking about our, the, the Abba Father prayer. How the Abba Father prayer is given to us so we can make heaven liquid on earth. We can materialize heaven on the earth through the Abba Father prayer. It was the pattern that Jesus left. And if we see the Abba Father prayer, Matthew chapter 6, I want you to see the following so we can get into topic just because the time is really limited. But I want you to see Jesus said, in this manner, therefore pray. What does it say? Next. Come on, say like if you had three espressos or two, one cortadito or come on. How many of you had coffee today? Let me see your hand. But show up. How many of you had coffee? Okay. Who, who here doesn't like coffee? So I could go lay hands on you and just set you free because you do need deliverance. I'm on my third espresso already, especially in this fast, you know. So come on, let's say it again. Those of you watching at home, stay tuned. In this manner, therefore pray. What is the next? Our Father... In heaven, hallowed be your name. The subject for this morning is hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. And I want you to write some of these things down. Let me teach you for the next 25 minutes on this subject. Hallowed be your name. This is the pattern that Jesus left us. When we pray, we pray as children. You know that to our Father, which is in heaven. And this Abba Father prayer is given to us so heaven can become material, liquid here on the earth. The word hallowed is the word honored. Those of you that take notes, I want you to write it down. Write it down. The word hallowed is the word honored. And once that the identity of God is revealed to you as a children, to you as a child of God, the next step is to honor God for who He is. Once it has been revealed to you that God is your Papa, that He is your Father, then He must be worshipped or hallowed or honored for who He is. We must understand the following. As a matter of fact, I want you, um, I want you to write this down. If God is not an honor as our source, is illegal for you to draw from him. If God is not an honor as your source, is illegal for you to draw from God. Why? Because the way that it works is that he begins the Abba Father prayer by establishing who he is, and then immediately he says, What's next? What he wants, what he desires is honor. Honor, write it down, is to value, is to treasure, to esteem, and to appreciate. What does honor mean? Honor means to value, to treasure, to esteem, and to appreciate. When you honor someone, you value that person. When you honor God, you appreciate Him. You honor Him. This morning when I got up early to seek His face, to worship Him, I didn't come to Him with a list of petitions. I came to His presence to honor Him. And to say, Lord, hallowed be Your name. The condition, I want you to write this down as well. The condition for the Abba Father prayer to be heard and to be answered is honor. The condition for the Abba Father prayer, you've read the Abba Father prayer, you know what it says. The condition for those of you who are at home and are listening to this, I want you to take these notes. This teaching will come handy. It will come handy, believe me. How many of you have ever, you've gone back to notes from two years ago or six months ago and you say, man, this is what I need right now. So the condition for the, Father, for the Abba Father prayer to be heard and to be answered is honor. In other words, honor is more serious than what we think. When it comes to honor, everything that follows in the Abba Father prayer is dependent, is predicated 
upon you honoring the Father. Malachi chapter 1 verse 6. Let's look at what the Father says. Many of you, when you hear the scripture, you think offering right away. We're not going to collect the offering yet. <laughs> Every time you hit Malachi, you start praying in tongues. Shakatam brukata. Touch your neighbor and tell him, it seems like God is talking to you this morning. <laughs> Malachi chapter 1 verse 6. A son, what? Come on, at least the net, help me out. A son, what? Honors his father and a servant his master. If then I am the father, here it goes. What is my honor? If I am your papa, if I am your source, source of life, source of joy, source of provision, where is my honor then? Because the whole Abba Father prayer being answered and even heard is based on honor. It's based on how much you value the Father, on how much you treasure the Father. Those of you who are watching, see, God says, if I am your father, then what is my honor? We must understand that our honor, hear me, when we come to the presence of God, honor is a priority. Honor comes before your needs. I've seen a lot of believers putting their needs before honor. If you put your need before honor, you will stay in need for the rest of your life. As a matter of fact, you will be a slave of your need for the rest of your life. What, what many people do is that they put their need before honor. When God says honor must be first. Say with me, honor must be first. So write this down. How do we honor? Well, Apostle, I heard that before. I want you to hear it again until it becomes a revelation to you. And you begin to apply it. A truth will never be yours until you live it. Once you walk in it, it's yours. And there's always more to it. Okay, so how do we honor? We understand what honor is. We know that honor comes before your need. We know the whole Abba Father prayer is based on you honoring the Father. The whole Abba Father prayer depends on you saying, Father, honor, hallow be your name. God the Father demands honor. He says, if I am your Papa, where is my honor? So how do we honor? Touch your neighbor and tell him it gets better. How do we honor? I want you to write this down. You honor God with your words. Man, words are so powerful. I said words are so powerful. You honor God with your words. Isaiah 29, 13. I want you to see the scriptures. Isaiah 29, 13. Say with me, I honor God with my words. It says, therefore, the Lord said, inasmuch as his people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but have removed the hearts far from me. So before we read that, it says, well, before we go to that part, it says that you honor God with your lips. You honor God with your words, but your words are not enough. But the first thing that you honor God with is your words. Say with me, my words have power. You honor God with your words. The words of your mouth have power. That's why complaining cuts the cycle of the blessings of God for you. Every time you complain, you dishonoring God. You are dissing God. You are turning your shoulder to, away from God. Well, pastor, but you don't know what I'm going through. Apostle, it's been really tough. Well, yes, I know it's been tough for you. It's been tough for all of us. It's been tough for those of you watching on, on the internet. But that doesn't give you an excuse for you to complain and stop honoring God with your words. I think I need to get down here because, oh my God. Look at somebody and tell them, it seems like they're talking to you. 
the moment you begin to complain, you cut the cycle of blessings. Oh my gosh, it's so hot today. Oh my goodness, it's so rainy today. Oh my gosh, his shoes barely fit. Oh my God, I can't bear. Oh, it, 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 the whole and everything stinks. And every, please, can you, can you rejoice for what God has given you? This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. If you begin to honor God with your mouth, watch how God turns your circumstances around. See, you are blessed to be here. We are blessed to be here. Healthy. Oh my gosh, I, I barely can. That person move over there. Oh, I got barely spent. Oh, I'm on the third row. People complaining about everything. They complain about this. Oh, too much light. They complain, oh, the floor is too slippery. They always complaining about something. If you complain, you are dishonoring God. Because you are saying, God, I don't care about what you've done. All I see is this temporal circumstance I'm going through. I guess somebody needs to hear this. Did you know that your trial has an expiration date? God ain't helping me. At home, maybe somebody helps me. The situation you're going through, it has an expiration day. Don't make a permanent decision on a temporal circumstance. God is about to turn. Touch your body and tell him, uh, God, God is talking to you today. Say with me, Father, hallowed be your name. So how do we honor? We honor with our words. Say with me, words. Number two, we honor God with our obedience. It's getting better. I love it. We honor God with our obedience. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 13 and 14. My wife helped me to learn how to say that word, Deuteronomy. He, she goes, it's just like doo-doo and Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. 11 verse 13 and it shall be that if you earnestly I know that now I'm gonna run out of amens if you earnestly what say it louder although your jaw don't want you to but say it obey your what my commandments which I commend you today to love the Lord your God and serve Him with all your heart and all your soul. What's going to happen then? Then I will give you the rain. You want the rain without the obedience. You want the blessing without the process. Like they say, you want the stars without the scars. You want the breakthrough without the fast. Is breakthrough fast. Is breakthrough prayer. When you obey God, He will see your honor. I will give you the rain for your land when? When? So how do we honor God? First, your words. Second? Second? So if you have obeyed God, you have a reason to rejoice. I said, if you've been obeying God, you have a reason to rejoice. The rain is about to fall on you. I think that now I need help, coach. I said, the rain is about to fall on you. In this feast of the Lord, the rain is about to fall on you. If you've been obeying God, if you've been giving sacrificially, praying sacrificially, if you've been putting, pushing the plate away, saying, God, I will obey you despite of my will, despite of what I feel, whether I feel it or not, I choose to obey God. Obedience is the decision. Today I get up and I praise Him. Today I say, hallow be your name. Today I say, honor be your name. I might have people talking about me. I might have 
have the enemy chasing me but I choose to obey God those of you that are at home I challenge you to obey God and when God sees your obedience he says there goes my son obeying me again I got no choice but to bless him I got no choice but to give him the breakthrough I got no choice but to give him answer prayers I came to talk to somebody today you obey God and it hurt you but God is about to bless you you push to the process you push to the pain and you said God I will obey you here it is my obedience yo 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 when you obey God he puts you in front of the line when you obey him you remind him of his son he says I remember somebody who threw a Obedience, hey, oh, shout obedience. God is looking for obedient children. Obedience, obedience, obedience. See, write this down. When you obey God, when you walk with your father, when you walk in obedience, you will see, you will see the blessings of God in your life. Because every time you obey, God sees honor. You honor Him with your words. You honor Him with your obedience. Say with me, obedience. See, I want you to, I want you to write this down, those of you that take notes. Your walk with your father is established by your obedience. Man, this, this is so good. Your walk with your father, that's why I thank God for the revelation our father gives us. This will change you. Your walk with God, it will be established by your obedience. So say with me, words, obedience. Number three, I want you to write it down. You honor God also with your resources. Say with me, resources. The book of Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. I want you to see it. Look at this. What does it say? Honor the Lord with what? With your possessions. With your resources. And the first fruits of all your increase. The moment God has your resources, He knows He has your heart. Because the Bible declares in the book of Matthew, that whatever your heart is, there will be your treasure. You have not fully honored God until He has your resources. Until He has your wealth. Until he has your treasure. Until he has not just your words, not just your obedience, but he also wants your resources. I heard one time someone that said, well, I really, if God was to really give me this, I will give it to him. A year went by as an apostle, but I still haven't gotten it. I told him, Miss, you know why? It's because you were not going to give it to him, even though you had it. Even if you had it. Because when you ask God for a seed to honor Him, He will put it in your hands. He gives seed to the sower. Oh, you're not hearing me. He gives seed to the sower. Honor will get you the house of your dreams. Honor will get you the car that you've always wanted to drive. Honor will make a business be birthed out of nowhere. Honor will change your status. Honor. You cannot just stay in your words. You cannot just stay in obedience. Then when you obey, then the next step, you don't hold back the resources. But you say, God, here are my resources as well. Matthew 6, 21. Got seven minutes left to finish. And then we pray together. Look at this. How many of you enjoyed those testimonies? God is doing it again. I love it. This is a season of answered prayers. Look at this. Matthew 6, 21. For where your treasure is, those that are watching at home. For where your treasure is, there what? 
Come on, say it louder. For where your treasure is, if you go to whatever bank you bank with and you check where your wealth is going, if it's going to the kingdom, your heart is in the kingdom. Because whatever your heart is, there will be your treasure.